Good evening, my name is Atticus, and today I will be talking about Raul, excuse me, Raul Wallenberg. Um, and, but first, I'd like you to imagine that the year is 1944, and that you are a diplomat sent by your country into one of the most war-torn spots of a war-torn continent, except that you don't speak the language, that you have no prior diplomatic experience, and that you're just a, a civilian, you're not a soldier, and you have no military training. Your mission is to save as many lives as possible. Uh, such a man was Raoul Wallenberg, and uh, I hope you'll be as inspired by his story as I have been when I learned about it. So who was Raoul Wallenberg, and why does history remember him? Wallenberg was born in 1912 in Sweden to an extremely rich and aristocratic family, kind of the Rockefellers of Sweden, they were known as. And according to the scholar Andrew Handler, in his 1996 book, A Man for All Connections, Wallenberg showed no signs of unusual courage or initiative during his youth or childhood. In other words, he lived kind of a perfectly normal childhood and youth. Um, and maybe were it not for World War II, we might not remember him today. So, what is it about World War II and Wallenberg's role in it that makes him such a figure of, of courage and a shining beacon of, of hope in, uh, in one of these darkest of historical times? Well, we have to understand the situation in 1944. The Nazis invade Hungary for the first time. That means prior to this, the Nazis had not invaded Hungary. Um, which means that prior to this, the Hungarian Jews, all 800,000 of them, had been immune from the Holocaust. But this changed in 1944 when the Nazis invaded. And in short order, um, as Professor Johan Matz in his 2012 article, Sweden, the US, and Raoul Wallenberg, uh, writes between April and July of 1944, so a period of four months, almost 450,000 Hungarian Jews were rounded up, largely from the countryside, and sent to Auschwitz, where three-fourths of them died within hours of arrival. So, one of the darkest things in history, one of the darkest things you can imagine. And what does Raoul Wallenberg do? Well, you have to understand, Roosevelt, the President of the United States at the time, hearing reports of these atrocities, set up what is called the War Refugee Board. And the goal of this board was to provide humanitarian aid and uh, financial assistance to refugees of the Holocaust. Through this funding, the Swedish government sent Wallenberg, who volunteered to go to Budapest, the capital of Hungary. Uh, and he was trying to save as many lives as he could, and he knew that time was short, and it was in this arena that Wallenberg proved that to be one of the most courageous people in history. Um, an incredible feat. So what, what did he do then? Well, <clears throat> according to the author Gordon Brown, who writes uh, in his 2007 book, Courage, within weeks, Wallenberg set up orphanages, nurseries, soup kitchens, uh, and hospitals throughout Budapest with the help of several hundred Jewish volunteers. He also distributed literally thousands of Swedish passports, or Schutzpasse, um, to Jewish people. And what these passports did is they provided immunity from the Nazis. So if you had a Swedish passport, the Nazis couldn't just send you to Auschwitz. So he, he, he gave these passports to thousands of people. And when he ran out of legal passports, he began to fabricate passports on his own. A very illegal offense, obviously, but relatively illegal in this context. And he gave these to more thousands of people. In addition, um, he, he, towards the end of the Nazi rule uh, in Eastern Europe, when the Nazis were being kicked out by the Soviet army from the east and the allies from the west, um, and they realized that, the, that their reign was almost over, um, a man named Adolf Eichmann, um, one of the head leaders of the uh, Nazi Holocaust in Hungary, gave an order to bomb the Jews inside Budapest as opposed to sending them to the concentration camp first. So he said, we don't have time to send them to the camp. Bomb them in Budapest. When Wallenberg learned about this order, he went to the Nazi commander and told him to his face that if this order was carried through, Wallenberg would ensure that he would be hanged as a war criminal after the war ended. And this threat worked, and the Jews in Budapest were not bombed. And through these efforts, Wallenberg saved approximately 50,000 people through that one act of courage. Uh, now, despite all his efforts, and he knew every day that he was living in danger of death. So when the Soviet army came to the outskirts of Budapest, he went to talk to them. And uh, according to the author's um, 
John Kunick and Richard Lester in their 1997 article, Profile of the Leader, The Wallenberg Effect. When Wallenberg left to go and talk with the Soviet leaders to uh, discuss terms of exchange for Jewish refugees, he left on January 17th, the morning of January 17th, 1945. He was 33 years old, and he was never seen alive again. We do not know where he died, we do not know why he died, and we do not know how he died. But, according to these authors, he is presumed to have died while in Soviet captivity. But his death remains a mystery. Although Wallenberg did not outlive the war, his legacy remains undimmed, undimmed and today there are literally thousands of memorials to him uh, across the globe. Here I've included a small sample, literally thousands. There's streets named after him, and this man right here, named Tom Lantos, was a boy in Budapest when Wallenberg came there in 1944. And Wallenberg saved his life, and he later moved to the United States, uh, became a citizen, uh, and was elected to the U.S. Congress. And in 1981, he introduced a bill making Wallenberg an honorary citizen of the United States. Wallenberg is now one of three such honorary citizens. And so I'd just like to end with a quote by this man about Wallenberg. He says, in history, one can find many men who have killed 100,000 people. But how many have saved 100,000? Wallenberg has shown us that one individual, motivated by genuine and personal concern for human rights, can face evil and triumph, that one person alone can make a difference, that there are genuine heroes to illuminate our age. I hope the story of Wallenberg has inspired you, has inspired me, and thank you very much for listening.